Welcome to Building My Legacy Podcast. This podcast is designed for leaders and entrepreneurs who want to leave a legacy and will provide strategies that focus upon key elements for legacy creation, determining your desired impact and its benefit, increasing your legacy's reach by engaging key stakeholders, planning, prioritizing, and executing. Here's your host, Dr. Lois Sonstegard. Welcome, everybody, to today's Building My Legacy podcast. I have with me today, Brigitte Dove. She is a meditation, expressive meditation um, coach, and um, has written a book called Lunchtime Enlightenment, Expressive Meditations for Manifesting Peace, Prosperity, and Passion. She works with, um, in coaching, in various venues with businesses, business owners, um, and uh, individuals, obviously, and so has an interesting perspective to bring to us today. So, Brigitte, if you could give us a little bit of a sense of your journey, what brought you to this place, why um, this form of meditation, and how you use it. All right. Well, uh, I arrived... um at this at the at the place where I wanted to study meditation because I had a very challenging childhood. I had a lot of fear and pain and anxiety. And I wanted to heal myself. And it was really when my son was born that I thought, oh my goodness, if I don't heal myself, I'm going to transmit all this anxiety and fear to him. Then we'll have another unhappy person on the planet. <laughs> so Um, I was searching around and I ended up in India, of all places, uh, studying with an enlightenment. With with your son? Yes, I took him with me. Uh, He was he was 14 months old when I took him with me. Okay. And I should I should add in here that when I was six months pregnant, I found out my husband was having an affair. So my life kind of. seemed to be going downhill and I just really needed something to help me at that time. And so, yes, I took my son with me and we studied, well, at least I studied with uh, Osho, the enlightened mystic, who taught uh, a wide range of different types of meditation techniques All all the ones that you probably know of, the sitting in silence and so on, but also this range of expressive meditations like laughter and tears and dancing and humming and uh, gibberish, and there's a dynamic technique. Uh, And the idea of these expressive techniques is to express out in the first stage of the meditation all of our worries and frustrations and anxieties and sadness and, and our laughter, which I hadn't realized I shut down my laughter and my joy. And I started to realize that I was finding myself again. I was getting back in touch with my true authentic self and releasing incredible amounts of tensions from physical tensions, mental tensions, and emotional tensions. And what I found uh, uh, after releasing all of this was inner peace, which was what I had been seeking because the the way I grew up, it was a household of chaos. I had a pretty crazy mother, so um, there was no peace and there wasn't much love either. So I also learned a lot about love, how to love myself and accept myself and love others, and also my creativity got unleashed. And I found I was a writer and a teacher and a trainer and all kinds of good things. So it was, it was a very powerful experience. Well, it still is because I still do these meditations. So how long was that process? When you went to India, how long were you there um, to well, assimilate all of these meditations yeah so I was there I I think I did about three different trips 
um, which might have added up to about a year or a year and a half altogether. Um, and so, yeah, people always want to know how long it takes <laughs> to release all the tensions. So it partly depends on, on how much tension you have in you that needs to be released, because I had a lot. Some people would have much less than me. And it also depends on your commitment to how much do you want this? Because I really wanted, I was totally 100% committed. I still am now to my teaching and training because um, it's become my greatest passion to share this because it works. You know, it really does. So, yeah, it depends on the individual. But with the expressive techniques, things go pretty quickly, pretty fast. So you use this with business people. Tell me, how do you do that? <laughs> well, uh, I have my own trainings uh, now, and most of, pretty much all of my clients are entrepreneurs. And so to be an entrepreneur, as I know for myself, um, we have to expand. If we want our business to expand, we have to expand. We can't keep in the same narrow way of thinking and old conditioned beliefs because we have to roll with what's happening. And I think this year is a great example of that. Uh, we have to be willing to pivot and to come up with creative ideas for things. Um, and so, yeah, so I run trainings. That's what I do. Um, because of the COVID this year, I've now, well, what I've set up for next year, three of my trainings are online and only one is in person. And so when you do trainings, what, what do you do trainings around? Meditation, I take it. Yes, yes. Meditation, because um, I know uh, a very wide range of different meditation techniques from different traditions, and they're for different purposes. And also different techniques suit different people. Got it. So, for example, I love the dancing meditation, but other people don't like that so much. They like the humming meditation or the gibberish meditation. So you kind of find what are the ones that work for you and do Got those. It. So I'm dying to ask you this question. In lunchtime enlightenment, expressive meditation, right? How do you do expressive meditation at lunchtime if you're in the corporate world and with colleagues? What was the last word? And you're with colleagues or business people. What do oh, you with, with colleagues. Them? Yeah. Well, I'll give you some examples of things I've done. I was invited into a corporation um, to do a lunchtime presentation, and they wanted the laughter meditation. Oh, interesting. And yeah, they absolutely loved it. The The HR person who organized it said it was they had the biggest turnout of any of their lunchtime presentations because, of course, everybody likes to laugh. And laughter is such a great stress releaser. It, it just makes you feel good. Yes, and, yeah. and on every level, because we release physical stress, we release mental stress, emotional stress. And it, it helps us to become more centered, actually, and calm because the first stage, we laugh, and, and then the second stage, we sit in silence. So in the second stage, you bring the energy of the laughter within to experience with your eyes closed what that feels like within, and it's an incredible feeling of joy and warmth and love and a very good feeling within, and it helps people drop down to their center, which is two inches below the navel, uh, much more quickly than if you just sit, sit and try and do it that way. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So two inches below your navel, is that, that's lower than the chakra? Yes, it's, a, it's kind of in the where the second chakra is really between okay. the first and the second chakra, but physically in the body, that's where our center is. And so, so many people live in their head up here, so we're a bit top heavy. <laughs> and um, so the idea is to bring the energy down to our center 
so that from that place of centeredness, we can be in our lives. And then it doesn't matter how chaotic things get, the situation gets, you can remain in that centered place. You know, it's interesting that you talk about laughter because many years ago when I first started my career, I was working with women's and children's hospitals um, as the head, the the department um, head for that, and especially with cancer with women. Oh, yeah. Um, We used humor a great deal. Yes. As part of the treatment therapy. And um, it it works incredibly well. So I can see where it would be very useful. Yes, it does help very much because it releases tensions from the body. And and another meditation uh, that I do, which is actually from the Tibetan Buddhist tradition, is a humming meditations. And I actually met a New York oncologist who used them. Uh, there's there's a whole series of them. I just teach one of them, but they all work. Um, to to it, you sent all his patients into remission of cancer. This humming meditation, because again, it helps to release stress from the body. And, and, and illness, el- illness or disease is just tension like this, you know. So it is tension, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So what are the biggest challenges people have when they think about getting into meditation? What is it that keeps people from doing it? The concept in my mind, as I hear you talk about it, I say, oh, that's logical. That's great, right? but then you don't always do it. So what are the challenges that people have and what do you have to work through to have a good meditative practice? Well, I think I think one of the most common challenges is is people go into fear and think I can't do this. <laughs> they think they think uh, that you have to close your eyes and sit like this for an hour or 3 hours or something like that. So what I do is I always start with explaining to people what meditation is and what it is not. So we start with the understanding of the uh, the mind. Okay, so and med- what so explain that to the audience please. What is meditation? What is it not? Yes. Meditation is not a technique. Meditation is awareness, a quality of presence that you bring to any activity. It doesn't matter what the activity is. All that matters is the quality of your presence with that activity. See, so right now I can see that you are totally present with this conversation. So that's meditation. Oh, interesting. But if you start thinking about the future or the past, that is not, <laughs> that's not meditation because then you're not present. Yeah, so it's actually very simple. And the only reason we don't stay present more of the time is we forget. And then our practice is to remember to be present with whatever we are doing. And then you bring a different quality to what you're doing. Okay. So I want to take this to a pragmatic level, if if I may. Mm -hmm. So being present um, keeps you in the here and now. Much of our work depends on being able to be future focused. That's where we solve. We solve tomorrow's problems today. So tomorrow will be a better tomorrow. So we can generate revenue, so we can grow, we can, all of those reasons, right? So Mm. in the present moment, I have to think of the future in order to arrive at the future. So how do you reconcile that push and pull between the tension between the present and the future? Well, first of all, you don't want any tension. (laughs) You want to be, you want to, meditation is based on relaxation, And with relaxation, you start with the body. So always look to see if your body is relaxed or if it can be more relaxed, because that's very key. Because the more relaxed we are, the more our heart is open 
the more our mind is open and the more creative we are. It's when you're all tense like this, then it's difficult for creative ideas to come through, uh, which we need if you're doing thinking about the future. You want your creativity available. So you can be fully present with what you're doing now and think about your trainings of next week or next month or whatever it is you want to plan for so that you're, you're actually in the present while you're doing the planning. Does that make sense? Uh, explain that a little bit yeah. more, please. Well, um, let's, say that, let's say right now I'm talking to you about what I'm planning for next year. Right. Yeah. So I'm fully in the present with you right now, but I'm allowing my my words, my thoughts to go into the future to think about, to discuss next year's plan, whatever it is. Yes. So the real thing is the awareness to be aware that. Right now, I'm sitting here in this chair and I'm talking to you. And right now, I'm allowing my mind to think about different things in the future. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So, so there's I, a presence. There's a quality of presence around the whole thing. Rather than going unconscious and being in the past or the future, but, but with un- unawareness. Got it. So I think of that as being very focused. Yes. And in a state of being. So a beingness, a present beingness. Yes, exactly the same. It's just different words for the same Uh, thing. Yeah. So is there ever, so how much time does one devote to meditation if you want it to be a part of your regular life? Well, I mean, Every moment is an opportunity for meditation because every moment is an opportunity to be in present present moment reality. Got it. So, so you don't have to like set aside time, so to speak. But what I do suggest with people is they start with five or ten minutes a day, being with themselves, the sitting in silence with themselves, and. Something I found that works very quickly to help people be more relaxed and come down from the head is to stand with bare feet on the earth. So I'm I, I'm fortunate I can do it in my backyard. Um, also standing on grass or sand or actually cement because cement's made of sand. Any natural uh, product because. When we get connected like that with our bare feet with the earth, it brings us to a state of relaxation and calm very quickly. It's a little trick I've learned over the years. Yes. So you could go to a park if you don't have grass or dirt in your own in your own house um, or anywhere where you can find that, but with bare feet, yes. And if it's too cold, well, you have to do it inside. <laughs> well, if it's cold, like it is here, you have snow, right? I yes. In the sense that's being connected to the earth because the snow goes into the ground. Yes. Yes. But we have to adapt to our situation with these things. Yes. Surely. Yeah. So I always suggest starting the day with some little short practice like that. And then you can set an intention. I want to be in the present moment all day. Now, you're not going to be because the mind is going to get going and take you into the future and the past. But just from setting the intention, it's going to help you to be more present or more focused is the same thing in in, in your business, in your life, you know, and especially listening to people, because I think listening is is an important quality in leaders that we listen to people. But you have to listen to yourself 
first and be connected to yourself and then you can encompass others more easily and what they're saying. So part of what I'm hearing you say is when you're connected to yourself, you're rooted in the ground. Yeah. You're in the present moment. Mm -hmm. What you're not doing is carrying on conversations within your own head. So you can really hear what the other person is saying. And in that way, there's a much greater connectedness. We solve yeah. problems better, right? So it, the, I had not thought of meditation as being um, part of that, arriving at that place. So that's very interesting. Yes. And, and the other thing is that you want to come down out of the head and become more connected to your heart. So it's like head, heart, and then down to the center, because then people people feel from you a warmer energy, a kinder or more compassionate energy, which I think is important in leaders, a more accepting energy because everybody makes mistakes, you know. So um, I think good leaders, they can accept themselves and therefore they can accept others, you know. It's amazing. Yeah. It is very amazing. So in your book that you have written about um, lunchtime enlightenment, what kind of enlightenment does one get during lunch? I've never <laughs> thought of I've never thought as of lunch as being anything but a nuisance because usually it gets in the way of something else I'm trying to get done. Oh, that's funny. Well, there is a story which is in the introduction to the book. I'll just show it to everybody. Here's the book, Lunchtime Enlightenment. There is a story of why it's called, why where that came from, Lunchtime Enlightenment. Um, and it, I was uh, giving presentations in a bookstore in San Francisco to people from the financial district in San Francisco. Um, so there's the lunchtime. And one of the um, assistants at the bookstore, she liked my presentation so much that uh, she gave it that title because they asked me to do a series and come once a month. So lunchtime enlightenment, and it became the title of my book too. Oh, uh, interesting. But yeah, it's about bringing a enlightenment at lunchtime. And, and what does that really mean? It means bringing relaxation because all the people I was I was leading through meditation at lunchtime, it was very short. It was like 20, 25 minutes because they didn't have much time. Um, they became very relaxed and just were able to take a breather, so to speak. And then it really helps the body feel better because – when we get tense, we forget to breathe quite often, <laughs> which isn't good for us at all. Uh, so when we have a little practice, so at lunchtime, you know, it could be go for a walk in the park or just sit in the park or find a place where you can just be on your own and eat, eat your lunch mindfully with awareness, like right now I am eating my lunch. It, it's, a, it's a whole um, way of bringing present moment awareness to whatever you're doing. So it could be lunchtime, it could be you're eating your lunch or walking down the street or going to an appointment. It could be that you're rushing because you're late. So you just say to yourself, okay, right now I am rushing. And then you bring presence to that. You still rush, but there's a there's an aware quality around the rushing and what so, that does. Oh. So I was going to ask you, what does that do? Yeah. So what that does is it, first of all, helps you feel more relaxed. And we always start with the body with relaxation because the more relaxed the body feels, the more the mind can relax and then the emotions can relax behind that. It's, it's very difficult to try and relax the mind. That's practically impossible. <laughs> but when you start with the body 
and can do some standing with your bare feet on the earth in some way or some kind of grounding exercise, this really helps bring bring the energy down from the head because stress is caused by too much energy in the head, too much wanting to be there when you are here. And that creates a division in us. I'm here, but I want to be there. Right. That's the mind creating a split in us. And that's what that's what creates the stress. Whereas when we learn to stay with the body, because the body is always in the present moment. And when we learn to be more connected with our body through our breathing. I mean, just to stop and take three deep breaths, it's very, very good for the body, for the mind, just to help us become more relaxed. Because actually the truth is, the more relaxed we are, the more productive we are. You can get more done in less time when you're relaxed. That is true. It is true. When you put yourself in a state of stress because you've got a huge long list, you tend to, you may get it done, but you finish exhausted. Exactly. Whereas, you know, you can have your list there, but then you do one thing at a time. And and when you're with that one thing, just be focused on that one thing. And that helps reduce the stress rather than focused on the thing, but thinking here, oh God, I've got all this other stuff to do because that's what puts you into stress. You know what, this is fascinating, and um, our time is almost up, so I just want to ask you, what are some thoughts that you have, things we've left out, things we have left discussed in an incomplete way? Where would you like to pick up some pieces so the audience is clear about what it is that you are doing? Well, um, it all starts with awareness, you know, with self-awareness, so Bring awareness to yourself at any given moment and don't judge yourself because that doesn't help anything. Okay, so what does judgment do? Stress is a divided body. What does judgment do? Well, judgment also divides us because those are the words should and ought. Like I'm sitting here talking to you, but I should be doing all kinds of work. So So again, it creates a division. Yeah, so I chose to be here with you. So I let go of the other things. I'll get to them later so that I can be fully with you now. And then that's much more relaxing and it's much more fun. And having fun and laughing every day is something I highly recommend because it's It really helps the body relax and the mind relax. And we're always more present when we're having fun because why wouldn't we be? We're having fun. Yes? Right. (laughs) So that's a great way to start with it too. Oh, it's amazing. It has been just delightful to have this time with you. And so for everybody listening to this podcast, we will have information about Brigido's book in the show notes so you know how to um get it it will all, it's also available through amazon is it not you, you yes it is yeah amazon's mm-hmm. seal of best book so congratulations <laughs> to you on that and thank you Brigida, thank you so much for being with us today and for sharing your story and what you have been doing and for those of you who are listening to our podcast, our Building My Legacy podcast, thank you for joining us today. Remember to visit us on our website, Build Tomorrow with the number two, .com, and um, all of our social media sites as well at buildtomorrow.com. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me, Lewis. You've been listening to Building My Legacy podcast with Dr. Lois Sonstegard. To book your appointment with Dr. Sanstegard, visit www.buildtomorrow.com.